Let's all eat avocado on toast, drink celery juice, and wear natural fragrance. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Josephine and on this channel we talk about all things fragrance. Today's video is part of a series I'm running on my channel for National Fragrance Week here in the UK, which is happening this week. So from the 16th to the 22nd of March. During this week, I will be posting a new video every day where I'm exploring trends within fragrances and cool and upcoming brands. Today's video is about natural fragrances. I will be sharing with you a little bit of background as to what a natural natural perfume really is and some really cool brands that do naturals very well. I will also be doing a giveaway so make sure you stay until the end of the video to find out what it is. So if you're interested in knowing more about natural fragrances then please keep watching. Alright so where does this natural trend really come from because we're seeing more and more natural fragrances. Well the natural trend comes as part of the self-care movement where people are looking for feel-good ingredients whether it's in food, in beauty or even in fragrance that they can use to enhance their beauty and well-being. What is a natural fragrance? It is one that contains 100% natural ingredients. This can be essential oils, it can be around the solvent, so rather than using ethanol, a brand uses grape-derived alcohol. It can also be free from nasties like phthalates, parabens, and petroleum-derived products. They can be a combination of these things or just, for example, natural ingredients. Now, what is a natural ingredient? What does that really mean. So a natural ingredient is an ingredient that is an essential oil or an absolute that has been extracted from natural sources. So it can be extracted from a plant, for example like jasmine absolute or lemon oil, or it can also be extracted from animal sources like beeswax or musk in some cases. A natural ingredient is also anything that has to do with naturally derived ingredients. What I mean by this is natural isolates, and these are molecules that have been extracted extracted, for example, in distillation from natural sources rather than being cooked up in a lab. Examples of natural isolates are, for example, vanillin that has been extracted from vanilla. And vanillin is used in a lot of fragrances, but also in the food industry. Another great example is coumarin, which comes from tonka bean. So these are your naturally isolated ingredients that come from a natural source. Now, natural doesn't necessarily mean vegan. I really want to make this a point because often natural goes hand in hand with vegan but it's not necessarily the case. A vegan fragrance is one that is only made based of plant-based materials. So if you have beeswax for example within a fragrance or ambergris, it isn't considered a vegan perfume. However, it is considered a natural fragrance. Okay, so now that this is cleared up, I also wanted to address a little bit about the debate around naturals and synthetics because I feel that people are saying that synthetics are bad, that we should stay away from them, that they cause irritation and it even in some cases can be carcinogenic. I just wanted to open the conversation around naturals and synthetics so we fully understand what we're dealing with rather than saying oh we should avoid synthetics and go all natural because that isn't necessarily the best solution either. So first of all when looking at naturals, naturals are not always the most sustainable. So for example ingredients like vanilla and sandalwood that are in very high demand, well there isn't the supply to meet the demand. So what does that mean? That that means finding more land to harvest the crops, which means possibly deforestation, or using land that could be used, say, for the food industry. So it's kind of saying, well, where is the priority? Should we use it for food production or fragrance production? And the second thing is, certain naturally derived products come from animals. And in some cases, for example, the musk, it will come from the deer musk. And in order to obtain the musk, the deer or the animal needs to be killed. It's not necessarily the best solution and not necessarily more sustainable than say a synthetic ingredient. Second is that naturals are packed with allergens. So people say oh synthetics cause allergic reactions. Actually naturals have more allergens than synthetic ingredients in some cases. So there's a regulatory body in fragrance called IFRA which gives guidelines as to what is the maximum percentage of natural ingredients that you can use in a perfume before it will cause an allergic reaction. These ingredients actually, so the listed allergens, will be listed on the ingredient label of any 
fragrance. A famous example of a natural ingredient that was used in a lot of perfumes, including Chanel No. 5, is Oak Moss Absolute. And a couple of years ago, this ingredient was banned to be used in fragrance because it was associated with having allergic reactions. So as a result, a synthetic alternative was used to replace it, and there have been a lot of reformulations within fragrances to accommodate that change. Another point is that naturals vary from batch to batch. You can't guarantee a very consistent olfactive profile. And linked with that is naturals have a very unreliable availability. And what I mean by this is that naturals are dependent on nature. So weather conditions, also whether they're in areas where there's conflict, that will affect the production of naturals. Now, when it comes to synthetics, the benefits of synthetics is that there's a huge variety of them. They come in the thousands versus naturals come in the hundreds. So you can get more variety in terms of synthetics, but also what they do is that they add a deeper level of complexity to a fragrance. And a great example of this is Chanel No. 5, because Chanel No. 5 was the first fragrance to use such a high concentration of aldehydes, which are synthetic ingredients. This high concentration of aldehydes has made an incredibly unique fragrance that is still iconic today. Synthetic ingredients also enable us to recreate notes that can be extracted in nature. So for example, Lily of the Valley or Muge, that flower is too delicate to undergo distillation and the odorant molecules are actually broken down by the process so it can't be extracted. Therefore, synthetics are used to recreate that scent of Lily of the Valley and create a beautiful composition that can be used in many fragrances. And finally, synthetics can be modified to create minimal level of allergens. So you have more control over that versus natural ingredients. That being said, natural ingredients are beautiful and really have that emotional connection because you know that somewhere around the world you have, say, fields of flowers that have been taken care of with a lot of love, have been harvested, and that connection is undeniable. Also, naturals feel very special because they vary from batch to batch, so one perfume can be very different from another, and so you really cherish that fragrance. There's certainly a feel-good factor with naturals. You're like, oh great, this comes from the earth, it must be better for me. So you have that feel-good factor. And finally, naturals also feel more alive because when you put them on your skin, they will mix with the oils on your skin and evolve over time. They're not stable ingredients like synthetics. Synthetics are very linear in their evolution, but naturals, they change and they surprise and delight you, which adds, again, a little bit of a touch of magic to these ingredients. So I have five natural fragrances with me today that I'm super excited to share with you. The first fragrance is called Papier Carbone by Orme. Orme is a French luxury niche brand. It is a gorgeous brand and it uses 100% natural ingredients. I will insert an image of the bottles on the screen because they look beautiful. They're sort of modern and minimalistic and very creative and have a bit of a vintage feel at the same time. Papier Carbone is a really interesting scent. It's incredibly unique and it reminds me of licorice root that I used to chew on when I I was little. So in France, in pharmacies at some point, on the counter, they would sell licorice root and I was always intrigued because it looked like wood in the pharmacy. But anyways, I ended up getting one as a kid to try it and Papier Carbone smells just like this licorice root. This perfume is woodsy, it's a little bit musty, has notes of patchouli, vetiver, ambrette seed and kayak wood, so it has this woody base and then it develops a sort of a um, aromatic feel with lavender that turns into to something that's a bit aniseed-like and licorice. So it's really that moment when you chew on the licorice that this fragrance recreates. So this is a very unique scent and just smells really good. So that was Papier Carbone by Orme. The second fragrance is also by Orme and it is called Le Passant. And Le Passant is a gorgeous, gorgeous lavender fragrance. Lavender isn't a note that I particularly am drawn to in the fragrances. There's just a few that I like. But when I smelled this perfume, I was like, Whoa, wow. This is incredible. This is a classic made modern. It is smooth and ultra creamy lavender scent. It has notes of bergamot, lavender, lavender, tonka bean, amorous, and vanilla. The quality of lavender in this fragrance immediately made me think of Pour un homme by Caron, which is a classic lavender scent. But this perfume is a classic, as I said, made modern. And it's ultra creamy and smooth, and the tonka bean adds a really beautiful sweetness to the 
perfume that is quite unexpected within a lavender based scent. I think this would smell very very good on a man and it's also very fresh. Out of all the perfumes that I tried from Orme, I would say this one is a very strong scent and actually surprising for a lavender fragrance because I find that lavender fragrances tend to develop a little bit faint but this one will stay strong throughout your wear. So that was Le Passant by Orme. The third fragrance is a perfume that I absolutely adore. It is called Rose Jam by Lush. Now Lush do natural fragrances very well and what I love is that they're super transparent about the ingredients that they use in their products. So they'll use natural essential oils in absolute but also nature derived isolates. Rose Jam is a gorgeous rose scent and essentially smells of Turkish delight and lemonade. This is how I would describe the scent. It has notes of lemon, rose, geranium and vanilla. So the rose in here is a sweet berry like rose. It's not syrupy, it's not too sweet, it's just done on the right level. Actually in fact the rose reminds me a little bit of dried rose petals. It has that bit of a musty feel which I very much enjoy. Essentially when the fragrance develops just imagine eating a rose Turkish delight. That moment when you eat half of it, look at it because I like to randomly look at my rose delight when I'm eating it. That clear kind of gelatinous pinky color inside of the rose delight. That's what this fragrance makes me think of. So that was Rose Jam by Lush. The next two perfumes are also from Lush. So perfume number four is 1000 Kisses Deep. This is a floral, fruity, balmy fragrance. It has a gorgeous note of osmanthus, but there's also mandarin, labdanum, and myrrh in here. What I love so much about this perfume is that it has a fuzzy apricot feel that really brightens the fragrance and that makes it quite soft at the same time. So that apricot feel comes from the osmanthus, but at the same time it has that heady jasmine effect without having jasmine in it. So I guess it's a combination of osmanthus and the myrrh and the mandarin, but it recreates a similar heady opulent feel from jasmine, but it's not overpowering. The mix of that with the apricot is just stunning. And in the dry down, you get the myrrh and the labdanum that work to your skin to get an ambery, a little bit of a sweet feel. So if you're into fragrances that are very floral, that are also a bit ambery, then I would definitely check out 1000 Kisses Deep by Lush. And the final fragrance is Confetti by Lush. This is part of the Renaissance collection that is inspired by Florence. And I've talked about this fragrance in my top 10 unique fragrances. I will link it down below because this is an incredibly unique scent. This perfume smells like sugar almonds and pear. It is so good and it's a very playful and joyful youthful fragrance. It's like candy for adults. It has notes of sandalwood, violet and rose and the more I smell this perfume I get almost a bit of a banana like feel especially in the opening. It's quite fruity and fresh and also beautifully powdery so as it develops you get that violet that peeks through and it reminds me a little bit of violet sweets. So this is quite a powder and delectable fragrance. So if you like sort of a almondy note and like violet, then I would recommend checking out Confetti by Lush. And now onto the giveaway. I will be giving away a 30 ml bottle of Rose Jam, which is this bottle, to one lucky subscriber. For a chance to win this fragrance, all you need to do is be subscribed to my channel, like this video, make sure you're also subscribed to my Instagram because I will be announcing the winner over there. Also, leave a comment down below with your Instagram handle so that I can contact you should you be the winner and let me know whether you're based in the UK or Europe because this giveaway is open to the UK and Europe only. And also I wanted to point out that I've been doing a few giveaways on my YouTube and also on my Instagram and that I will be announcing the winners in a week time. So make sure you stay tuned for that. So that was it for my video. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about natural fragrances. Have you tried natural fragrances? If so, leave a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you tomorrow in a new video. Bye!